back to my first day at school and what a long day that was, I'll tell you. There was trouble from the get-go. Having to wear a uniform, I barely managed to keep my clothes on at nursery, never mind these horrible black itchy things made from nylon mix. Then, hardest blow of all, I couldn't take basin. My teddy bear, all right, laugh all you want. I heard all the possible talks from adults since I could say his name, but that's what it was. His name was Basin. My mother was shocked and bewildered that a child of two had heard the word basin, understood it, and chosen it for the most beloved childhood companion, <laughs> apart from the dog. Meanwhile, my granny was mortified and tried to bribe me with dummies to rename him Ben or something like that, but it didn't work. Anyway, I digress. My first lonely day at school without basin actually went fairly well, I suppose. When introduced to the head teacher in the playground that morning, my dad spotted the dreaded signs early enough. I was going to bite. What can I say? I was a bit of a feral child who spent a lot of time with our old grumpy family dog and some bad habits were picked up along the way. <laughs> After that close call, all the other school nonsense went in really quickly. Looking back, I suppose it would do, only being three hours or something like. Finally, for the purposes of storytelling, you understand, the bell went. That sweet, loud, bone-shaking sound vibrated throughout all the thin walls of this grey, ugly, new-build school. My new classmates and I were free, for the day at any rate. As we ran out into the playground, this was the early 1980s, no one cared about health and safety yet. <laughs> I spotted her. That wee, dumpy figure, the pastel raincoat buttoned up to her chin, and one of those thin, plastic, see-through rain hats with the little white polka dots on it, covering her blue rinse. It was Grandma. Not to be confused with Granny. Granny meant walks in the park with dogs, scouring skips and gardening, that sort of thing. Grandma meant knitting cups of tea and watching the snooker. You can probably guess which grandparent was my secret favorite. I didn't have the patience for knitting. My stitches were always too loose or too tight, and frustration came too easily. I never drank tea. It was too sugary for me. It was only good for dippy biscuits, but only until a clunk of one flopped off into the tea. Then it was even murkier, with beige blobs slowly disintegrating from solace to liquid. And as for snooker, well, let's not even mention that. But today was different. Today, I didn't want a trip to the park, which might mean having to interact with other children. I was too tired for rifling through pieces of old wood and dodging rusty nails and skips. Today, a cup of tea with dippy biscuits and the snooker quietly playing in the background was just what I needed. Grandma did not disappoint. Stepping through the front door, the quiet mumble of commentators came drifting out from the living room door at the top of the stairs. Better yet, there was Hazel, a grumpy old family dog, waiting slowly wagging her tail and begrudging the effort of happiness. I was happy too. Home from that horrible place called school, all of that hassle was away till tomorrow. For the rest of the day, I could settle in front of the telly and watch the miserable drizzly rain through the window. The shuffle of grandma's slippers scraping their way from the kitchenette. That meant dippy biscuit time. But when the tray was carefully placed on the poof, there were no biscuits. No rich teas, no ginger nuts, not even digestive biscuits, my least favorite kind for dipping. Instead, there was a cup of tea for her, a carton of apple juice for me, and strawberry tarts. <laughs> These were the biggest strawberry tarts you had ever seen. They were bigger than both of my small hands put together. They were bigger than both of my grandma's hands put together. And the strawberries themselves were massive. They stretched from one sticky end of the pastry cup all the way to the other end. The single strawberry in each one towered a good two inches high from their beds of cream and glaze. These were spectacular things. <laughs> and best of all, Grandma had only gotten two of them, one for each of us. But we had to eat them now, savor them quickly. My, she was sure my dad would not be pleased about this. after all. Ours was a cup of tea and one dippy biscuit each. 
The new plate and crumb staged perfectly on the poof, just in time. Since then, a lot has changed. I finished school and university. Now I'm the one picking children up from school. But I've never forgotten that glorious day with grandma and the secret strawberry tarts. I've also never given up the search to find those perfect strawberry tarts. I've scoured many a baker's, but those strawberry tarts weren't there. I, I found a few good impersonators, but that's all they were, impersonators. Till now, I'd almost given up hope. And the search wasn't even on my mind today. I was out to pick up a new iron, of all things, how boring and mundane can you get. And I wanted a quick sausage roll, despite the bat, before picking the kids up from school. But the queue at Greg's was too long, and I stumbled upon a tiny, brown, uninviting sign of a completely empty shop. A baker's shop, to be precise, with sausage rolls and no queue. It was as I was getting my change. I happened to glance down. There they were. The perfect strawberry tops. I think it went well. Um, it depends the kind of on what bus you're on. It actually goes better when there's more people on the bus, just because I think people feel safer and they kind of look around and see how other people are reacting and they feel um, like they can enjoy it more when there's more people around. Because um, I did it before when there were only a couple people on the bus and I think they feel a little bit more threatened. They don't know what's going on. They think maybe you're crazy. And um, yeah, and it's really hard to do to perform when people are not paying attention, when they don't want to listen to you and you feel like, um, yeah, it's actually really, it's a lot more nerve-wracking than I thought it would be. Um, so, yeah, that was, um, but, uh, but for the most part, I think the performances went well, um, and people kind of learned how to respond. It's a good study in human behavior to see how people react, and, you know, how they look around and see how other people are reacting and kind of learn what they should be doing, and so it's interesting.